how to get you to, your name to Brenda and get you on the list so that you can get the announcements. It's important. Big announcement for today is that at 4 p.m. today, in the sanctuary and on Zoom, there is a concert by our own Lily <laughs> and friends. Uh, suggested donation is $25. So tune in, turn on, and enjoy. <laughs> I won't drop out. Uh, exciting news. The RE children are coming back on campus on December 19th. Yay. We're talking, what, three weeks? And that's another reason for us, although the kids that are coming back have been vaccinated, it's another reason to remember to keep our masks on around them. Uh, tomorrow is the last day to bring in the Adopt-A-Family gifts into the family room. The church will be open. It's normal office hours. If you haven't already um, given your gift, um, you can check the announcements for the online link. Uh, you go online, check a Google Doc, pick your gift, buy it, bring it in. Monday, tomorrow is the last day. Um. And as we enter into worship, we sound our bowl three times. Once for those who came before. The Tongva people, who were the original stewards of this land and who called it home long ago. We honor also our founding members of this congregation who imagined and planted the seeds that have grown into who we are today. We ring at once for those of us here and now. For our members and friends and visitors, for our beloved community, our staff, our extended UU family, and all those who we hold in our hearts um, as we care for and grow this beloved community. And we ring it once for those who will come. For those whom we haven't met, who will come to find belonging with us and call MVUUC their spiritual home in the future. And I will light our chalice with these words. We light it, this chalice, as a symbol of our Unitarian Universalist faith, symbol of hope, symbol of strength, symbol of community and connection in gratitude. So I will go down and do that. I should have said our chalices, <laughs> always acknowledging our Calipayan partner church and always lighting a chalice, the gift from them, from their children, um, our connection with them, so far away, but so close to our hearts. And it, um, let us speak our covenant. You can also, if you're so moved, stand for that or not. We're getting a little lazy in this, this Zoom thing. Um, <laughs> so, okay. Love is the doctrine of this congregation. The quest of truth is its sacrament and service is its prayer. To dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge and freedom, to serve the world in fellowship to the end that all souls shall grow in harmony with the divine Thus do we covenant with each other. And let us uh, sing Spirit of Life. 
in, first in English and then in Spanish. grateful that you are here and I came up I'm also an acrostic lover so I love seeing a word put down and then some meanings put down each by each letter of that word so I made an acrostic I think it's on the screen yes okay and um, I hope it makes sense I, from what what Catherine was reading earlier I think it's sort of a combination of gratitude and thankfulness so giving real and thoughtfully inspired thankfulness with unlimited delight every day. Um, it was just fun to do. I like doing those. And uh, it's sort of what it says to me, I think, to remind myself to give thankfulness and gratefulness every day. It's very important, and it enriches you. It makes you, once you start thinking of something that you're grateful for, then you think of a whole bunch more. So I, I like that part. Um, I wanted to ask each of you to take a big breath in and let it out. And now I want you to take it in this time, but think of a person that you're really grateful for. And hold it for just a second with that person in mind and slowly let out your breath. And hopefully that puts a smile on your face under your mask, so we can't really see. Um, does anybody want to share who they who they're grateful for? Just Ellen. You. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I'm grateful for you. Um, we all have many jobs here, and I'm grateful for all the work that happens. Bob. Um, my wife and partner Megan. Oh, thankful yeah. for Megan. Wife and partner for several, many years, right? Uh, many. Oh, many. <laughs> oh, I thought, oops, I'm putting him on the spot. Don't put him on. Um, I wrote a few notes just, just for myself to remind myself to be grateful and stay grateful for things. Um, I just said, I'm so grateful for my family. I'm grateful for all my friends. I'm grateful for nature, especially the animals. And I live in a place with animals surrounding me, horses and cows and alpacas and goats and mm -hmm. sheep and pigs, cats, dogs, all kinds of birds. So it's really, it's really there all day and it's wonderful. I'm especially grateful for my little dog, Ivory. I'm grateful for the privilege of having an abundance of food, shelter, health care, and safety. I'm grateful for my life and the freedom I have to vote to become educated about anything and everything. I'm grateful to be able to choose how I believe and how I choose to worship. I'm grateful for the experiences I've had and the experiences yet to come and much, much more. Gratefulness just seems to expand. 
The more I think about it, the more gratitude I feel for everything. Um, I was especially grateful to this congregation and community because when my sister's service happened earlier this month, we had a wonderful group of people coming to help with it and a wonderful attendance. And the love was just here. It was wonderful. And I know she, wherever she is, she appreciates it and enjoyed the music was fabulous. And um, it was just, it, it did feel good. It was a really good feeling uh, to have that day. So I'm very grateful also for that experience. I have um, another little thing to share. I kind of borrowed it from Pinterest. Um, the author is unknown, so I don't feel as guilty. Um, I'm going to change it just a tiny bit. And I thought it was, I, I liked all the things that it said. Be grateful that you don't already have everything you desire. If you did, what would there to be to look forward to? Be grateful when you don't know something, for it gives you the opportunity to learn. Be grateful for the difficult times. During those times, we grow. Be grateful for your limitations, because they give you opportunities for improvement. Be grateful for each new challenge, because it will build your strength and character. Be grateful for your mistakes, they will teach you valuable lessons. Mm -hmm. Be grateful when you're tired and weary because it means you've made a difference. It's easy to be grateful for the good things. A life of rich fulfillment comes to those who are also grateful for the setbacks. Gratitude can turn a negative into a positive. Find a way to be grateful for your troubles and they can become your blessings. And like I said, author unknown, but appreciated. And I'm grateful to them. I, um, I kind of wanted to talk to have people share on Zoom also, if there's something especially today that they're feeling grateful and gratitude for, because it's an everyday thing. And it's something that maybe just sparks you today. And I would, li I would love for that to be shared. Just, can you see for me, Catherine? Um. If anybody puts it in the chat or anybody here in person. I'm not sure who me and me to everyone. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, anyone at home, oh, that's what he wrote, John. My husband, Mike, came immediately to mind. Um, that's from Reverend Maggie. Um, he died in 2014. Um, and Reverend Maggie says also, thankful for our community and our hopeful future. Nice, and I'm thankful to, for Reverend Maggie. <laughs> and I think probably that goes for everybody. It was a unanimous vote, and we're very, I think we're very lucky. We're very lucky to have her giving us more of her time and treasure. That's really, that's really special. Does anybody else here have anything they would like to share? Ellen. I don't think we say it enough. I'm grateful for Biden and Harris, President and Vice President. Yes, for President Biden and Vice President Harris. Sleep at night. I don't know either. I think that's a, it's a, I don't know why people want that job. <laughs> it just seems so that you can't please everyone. And it would be really hard to, to let some people down in order to get other people uh, provided for. It's got to be tough. It's got to be a lot of tough decisions. Um, I'm always so, always really grateful to the people here that do put on the services because it's not an easy thing and it's, it's something that needs to be done every week. And Catherine and Jeannie doing the worship committee, we need more people. They, uh, nice. they do a beautiful job of bringing in folks and of course Reverend Maggie's services are wonderful and of course Lily, thank goodness Lily's here uh, as much as possible because that just enriches everything. The music is fabulous. So I'm, I'm, I'm always grateful for many things. I don't, I don't think that I always show it. My daughters say I don't. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but I am, and I, and I appreciate that, that other people probably are in that same boat. So it's not always something that just has to come out. It can also be held close to your heart. So I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for this beautiful day. And... Um, I think we've read the acrostic. Is still on there. There's oh, there's more sharing. Just, um, Excellent. Um, Carter, I can't hear you very well when you read. I don't know how you can do that, but okay. 
Mm, you won't be able to see. Oh, there okay. you go. Hi, are you here? There okay. we go. I'm oh, good. Um, I'm grateful for that. Thank you. So I'm sorry. Marlene and um, Marlene's uh, and Pat from Marlene Patrick, this is from Marlene, is grateful for um, my brother Ed, who grocery shops for our mom every Sunday and takes her to church. He always gets her a bouquet of flowers. Oh, that's And nice. um, Julie Steinbach is grateful. For um, I'm grateful for my 15-year-old uh, Mika cat in her hospice days for teaching me so much about caregiving. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Well, thank you all, and I'll turn it over to Jeannie. Where to begin? An attitude of gratitude. You know, there's so much to be grateful. Just to be grateful, just making it through COVID, and the COVID pandemic is a good place to start. Having to shelter in place for over a year makes one aware of the important things truly deserving of gratitude. The loving guidance of Reverend Maggie, the Zoom Sunday services, the happy hours, and finally, being able to meet again in sanctuary, to see faces next to you and in front of you and be grateful that everyone is here, those of you who choose to come, and then to see people on Zoom. It's, it's lovely. And I'm deeply grateful. Being able to meet for Thanksgiving dinner this year was a very special. There weren't many of us, but thanks to David Becker, Reverend Maggie and Cat Mayfield, a right proper feast was put before us. And thank you, Debbie, for the lovely table setting. She came and did this lovely table, and then she wasn't there to enjoy the feast. We all had a wonderful time, and it was absolutely lovely. Uh, hopefully next Thanksgiving, we will have a full house. I would love to see that. And Reverend Ellen, and your prayer has been a tradition for years longer than even I have been here. And that's saying something. And to you, my beloved community, I am deeply, deeply grateful. You are my family. And I love you, and I bless you, and I thank you. We have pulled together during troubled times. And for those of us who stuck it out, a bright new future lies ahead. I am grateful for two, actually three minor miracles, which recently occurred. The first was the unanimous vote to pass the new bylaws. For any UU congregation to agree 100% on anything, is almost unheard of. Then we did it again when we called Reverend Maggie to be our settled minister. The third miracle was the length of the bylaws meeting, 15 minutes. That has to be the shortest congregational meeting on record at MVUUC. And for that, I'm, I'm grateful. I came prepared. To the, to the meeting with a printout of all the bylaws and all the arguments for each one that I thought was would be necessary. And nothing was necessary. Everybody had read them and voted for them. And that's a tribute to the committee who put together a, a bylaws that was understandable and readable in one session. And nobody had any arguments. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that, my people. It is a tribute to this congregation and to Reverend Maggie that these recent events turned out so well. Without, I'm going to name four people in particular, and, or five people, and that's Reverend Maggie, who was here to pick up our, the pieces when everything fell apart. And then COVID struck, 
and seamlessly she moved us into meeting on Zoom and our happy hours. And Lily, who has been here through thick and thin, and blessed, blessed be that you are with us, and our Zoom people. Bob, not only did he help us, does he help us, did he help us with Zoom, but he was the one that kept our plant here going, along with Brenda and with Tracy. But all of these, these wonderful people, and Don, who's, I guess he's in, in, in constant, in, constant in, the, in the closet today, working on, on, on the sound. Without these, our wonderful people who stepped in and did the things that we needed when we needed them, we wouldn't be here. So we've come together, and I'm looking forward with gratitude, deep gratitude in my heart to the things that we will accomplish and the evolving community that we are becoming. I can't say it enough. I love you, I bless you, and I thank you. Blessed be. Alan? Okay, I'm back in the saddle again. <clears throat> when, <laughs> when Catherine asked me to do this, she said, now when you get up there, this is not a talk about the usual stuff. You can't say you're grateful for Letha, that you're grateful for your kids and your grandkids, and you're grateful for Letha's kids and her grandkids. And you have to talk about something more serious. <laughs> I told you I was going. <laughs> so that did get me to thinking, like a lot of things that happen here at Monta Vista. Um, I've been here uh, 2004 about starting 2005, came in involved with RE, doing all these things. And even at the time, I was wondering, why am I spending so much time here? First thought that popped into my mind is, oh, it's old man trying to get into heaven meme. <laughs> well, for some people that may work, but that's not really in my belief system, so why was I here? And I kept realizing that I liked being here, I liked the people, I liked the kids, being with the kids all the ages. Helping Letha, I was doing preschool through high school. It was fun, and the more I did, the more I wanted to do. So I'm going, okay, my gratitude for this place is action. And that got me thinking, okay, we sit around Thanksgiving table and you go, I'm thankful for this. I'm thankful for Uncle Fred, who I never see, I never talk to, but I'm grateful for him. It's a very passive activity, being thankful, saying you're thankful, saying, you're grateful for somebody. That's very passive. So what do you do when you have questions? You Google. So I went on to Google and took a look. And guess what? For the last 20 years, the behavioral psychologist people at UC Riverside have been working on gratitude, investigating it. And they do recognize, in my words, there's passive gratitude, which is where you say, oh, I'm grateful for that. And then there's active gratitude. 
and they would run experiments with the students and high school kids and these things of, if you're grateful for something, how do you show it? You don't just say it, you do it. You know, if you're grateful for your Uncle Fred, then you write him, you call him, you visit him, you keep a relationship going. You can't just passively say, I'm grateful and have it mean anything. So as it got more and more into this, I realized I get asked to do things here and I do them. And every time I do them, I get a little more thankful that this place is here. We've had some stress since COVID started with COVID, um, death of a grandson, death of a son, um, death of, or near death, severe illnesses with Bernie. Um, in this community, I'm not outgoing, you know, I'm an INTJ personality type. I keep to myself, you know. Uh, <laughs> but it's not difficult anymore to be up here and talk because this is family, this is friends, and I am grateful. And yeah, I mess up, but you guys put up with me. So for that, I'm grateful. And I want to thank you all for being here. And that's it. Thank you for thank you. helping us pull through, too. <laughs> Believe me. Well, a huge thank you to you three for sharing. And um, it's been, it's interesting, um, at the beginning of the year, well, a year ago, actually, Debbie's daughter was our featured speaker on Zoom, and she spoke about gratitude and led a, a gratitude meditation. And then at our New Year's, uh, our first uh, service after the New Year's, um, uh, Kusala Bhikshu, um, the monk who, who, Buddhist monk who speaks to us every year, spoke about cultivating gratitude, um, a gratitude practice. And I believe we've had some other, it's sort of been a theme, <laughs> I think. And this, I don't think this is a culmination, but a continuation. And I, I know, um, I think I spend a lot of time intellectually thinking about it, but I also have developed a gratitude practice. And I know we've been We've had that recommended as sort of a private thing, but I do it every day. And I think that, like Alan was saying, gratitude is, is a, an action. Uh, it can be a state of being. You can be in gratitude, and you can actually live in gratitude. It's a lot of work, but it's something to strive for. And um, through that be, uh, grows the ability to be thankful. So that's sort of what I've taken from it, and, and there is so much research. Um, so this is, this is a special day. I, I've, and thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody that had a part in putting on this service, um, our Jarius and um, Bob and um, Don, who's in the closet, and Lily. Thank you. <laughs> Don, when are you going to come out? Da no. <laughs> Sorry, Don. <laughs> But um, thank you to our speakers. Thank you to everybody here in person and on Zoom. And just thank you. And I am going to extinguish the chalice, but not the light of truth. Um, OK? The warmth of community, the fire of commitment, these we will carry in our hearts until we're together again. So I'm going to go do that. Um, <laughs> Our benediction, 
May gratitude flow within you, filling your heart and mind with an ever-growing, ever-present sense of thanksgiving. Go in peace, be makers of peace. Blessed be.